Hi guys, it's Samuel Larson here and today we are going to go over my Digital Elite Camp 2017 notes. So a lot of good, very fresh information is coming up. And uh, these are the things that I personally wrote down from uh, 20 speakers that uh, present the 30 minute presentations. All experts on their field, mostly CRO, but also a little bit of traffic. So a pretty holistic picture here. Now, these notes are uh, just things that I found interesting personally. So we're probably going to dig a little bit deeper into the more advanced topics, as uh, that's mainly uh, what I'll cover here. So without further ado, let's uh, just jump into it and uh, get started. So. As uh, with every great conference, uh, we start with an opening keynote. And uh, this is by Pep Laja. It's, uh, I guess it's Pep Laja. Don't get mad if I <laughs> misspell it. But uh, really, this is the guy I learned under. So it's a very data-driven approach to CRO. And uh, the guy's like, overall philosophy is that everything should be provable with uh, the data. So opinions are like buttholes, everybody has one. And that's why we need to be able to really uh, look at the numbers and uh, stay objective as much as possible. So this really is a talk about being humble and being conscious of uh, your own brain bugs uh, when you're optimizing and testing. So everybody has uh, cognitive uh, um, kind of like uh, cognitive, uh, yes, cognitive biases. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, so you need to look out for them when uh, you're running your testing program and when you're working at zero, uh, because it's one thing to actually get results. And uh, by if you really are after results, you have to be willing to be wrong sometimes. So it can be tough for your ego. But uh, there's a little bit of uh, a problem with uh, CRO people because uh, typically the best CRO people are actually very humble. They're willing to be wrong. They don't have a big ego about their ideas, etc. But once you actually go and sell it, um, that's when it would be good to have uh, confidence, opinions, and so on. So you could sell like pretty much anything with enough confidence because uh, that confidence does get transferred to the client. However, when it's time to deliver, uh, that confidence often hurts you. So it's a nice paradox there to be aware of. And uh, really, if you've been on this for a long time, uh, you know that this uh, will kill your ego in the long term because uh, nothing shatters your confidence and illusions like A-B testing. Even the best AP testers, they're wrong a lot. And uh, really, like when I talk about the best AP testers, I'm talking about the best optimizers because conducting an AP test is purely a technical matter. It's more about what you're testing that's important. But um, let's move on. Uh, there's really two kinds of research, and there's always these like parent categories, and then you can dive into so many subcategories. So if you think about uh, CRO, it's really about websites and it's about users or the audience. So these are the big, big boxes that uh, you would need to crack. But uh, just like a great mind map, this goes to like infinite levels and uh, it almost never stops. So people can be really complicated um, in both how they make decisions to what they want, how they want it, etc. So that can be really difficult to figure out. So that's going to be a big challenge. And now we often assume these things. Again, it goes back to ego. And uh, oftentimes we cannot know what we don't know. So um, we all have like very strong opinions we think we know, 
but uh, oftentimes if we start start researching uh, we'd be shocked on uh, what they actually are after and what they want what motivates them what kind of people they are and that's really the problem with data uh, the data doesn't tell you why and so oftentimes you need to do your experiments you need to do qualitative stuff um, because it's not enough to just look at your analytics and draw big conclusions but this will be one of the things that is a big advantage over humans that humans still have is that uh, they are able to take into account that human element uh, better than robots can at least probably for the coming decade or two so that part of the experience of the zero process is not going away and uh, it cannot be taken away from uh, humans um, so that data needs to be interpreted and oftentimes that can be quite complicated um, but with that, uh, we get a lot of ideas from that data oftentimes. And uh, it's, it can be tough to just read them as ideas, since uh, we never actually know if they will work. So that goes back to the humbleness and why we need to be flexible with whatever we're doing. Because there's also the letting things go part. And if you really fall in love with your ideas all the time, that's going to be a big problem because then you are going to look at these A-B testing results through the lens of like, I wish this test had won or it should be like this. And you're never able to challenge yourself, change your viewpoint, take into other opinions like you should be. Um, but really, um, this is at the heart of it, so being open-minded, but also keep in mind that really it's all about changing the user experience at the end of the day. So this is where we need a lot of empathy. Now, if your brain is uh, really filled with ego again, and uh, you have a brain that is high on dopamine, high on testosterone, um, brain science tells us that those people are like inversely low on empathy. So if you have those two chemicals, it naturally lowers your empathy levels and you won't be able to understand people as much as uh, you would otherwise. And you simply won't care. So that's a problem because uh, at the end of the day, it's about changing user behavior. And if a test doesn't change user behavior, it basically won't do shit. Uh, so, this is something we need to keep in mind. Um, it's not really about the button colors or changing the font so much as it is uh, doing these fundamental changes that will actually change the experience. And experience changes behavior. So, that was the first talk. Very interesting to see Pep on the stage and meet him in real life as well because uh, you only see these people on the internet as so, uh, you kind of start wondering whether they're real or not but then uh, that's really the first talk the second talk is about uh, growth and how we can systematically build growth by Morgan Brown so he provides a couple of examples here about how they had a bar in a university and they couldn't figure out how to make more people come up then uh, they went ahead and looked on uh, the downtown Santa Barbara uh, to see what the successful bars had in common. They figured out that uh, all the successful bars actually had a bar near the entrance, so it always looked like it was full. They did that and uh, suddenly they found success as well. Um, but that took a long time to find out and it was a lot of effort. They really struggle with it and that's why when you're looking to grow there is no silver bullets uh, it's about experimenting and learning from it
A great book I'll recommend is uh, The Lean Startup. Uh, so it's uh, Eric Reyes, I believe. This is a great book, not only for startups or beginning entrepreneurs. It's also a great book for CRO because it's this build, measure, learn loop that you're constantly going through and you're looking to build something, see how people react to it and learn from that. Then you build again, see how the people react to it and learn again. So that never really stops. And that's a way where you can find continuous competitive advantage as well, because people aren't doing that. So if you're able to learn faster than others, uh, you will always be ahead of the curve. Similar to Amazon, they started A-B testing way before everybody else and uh, look at where they are now. So they were able to experiment with a lot of things, learn quickly and then like up their game incrementally. And people weren't doing that back in the day. So they just got so far ahead of everybody else in uh, their cumulative learning. And that's really a cool thing when you start to think about the possibilities of this. But uh, in general, this is more like an entrepreneur talk, um, but you could think of it from the CRO standpoint as well. So if you're in a, let's say, e-commerce business, or whatever business really online, is the CEO that has to drive growth. And I think this in my business that uh, I, as the founder, I have to drive standards because other people are not necessarily as motivated to demand so much of themselves, partly because of incentives, of course, uh, as the founder is. So if you're holding the stakes, and if you're taking the punishment and the rewards, you need to be able to be the person that is there driving the growth and not just sitting on the sidelines. You need to get your elbows into the mud and be the example of leading the forces in the battlefield from the front. Taking the risks, taking the pain, but showing an example. Now, he introduced a nice... Uh, things that I never actually heard of before, but it's the so-called North Star metric. And this was interesting because uh, I've always uh, looked at as like KPIs or metrics as like something you combine. But uh, he presented this case where you actually have just one metric. So for example, Airbnb, it could be uh, bookings per week or something like that. That would be like uh, their core metric. So if that metric is going up uh, compared to a other period, maybe like last year, then they're doing well. So as long as that like North Star metric, the key number one metric in their system is going up, then uh, they're happy. And this metric should measure value. So it's the so-called product market fit for that particular customer or audience. So how are we serving people? How, are, how happy are they? What's the satisfaction level? And uh, this will like very closely correlate whether we're able to keep them as clients. So many SaaS businesses, for example, have this retention metric there because uh, retention is really ugly for a lot of uh, SaaS businesses you'd be surprised how low of a retention rate every SaaS business has. So the idea here is that the, the North Star metric would be um, somewhat tied to the growth and not just tied to the growth, but tied to what creates growth. So the idea is that the, Growth is then like the number one metric pretty much that you measure your success with. So you're always looking to grow, 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 grow. And if there's a metric that really summarizes whether you're growing or not, how fast you're growing, etc., that's a great metric to follow because it will able, enable you to benchmark yourself 
uh, do your past performance really well. Now, that's about it. A couple of quotes that I wrote down, or at least one. A good plan executed now is better than a perfect plan executed next week. So that's an old quote by somebody famous. Uh, I didn't write down who, but it really is uh, true in a sense that uh, too many people wait around endlessly and never get to action. And as soon as you just get that one foot moving and you start doing something, you're much more likely to actually get somewhere with it. And at least if you fail, you failed forward, so to say. So you will learn something from that quote unquote failure and you will be able to do smarter and be smarter in the future. So in the end of the day, like uh, whether it's business, A-B testing, optimizing, this is looking to keep what's working well. So this part and uh, discard what doesn't work. Um, so you're essentially learning these two things. So imagine like if you had two buckets, uh, one would be works, second would be what doesn't, doesn't work really. So work doesn't work. And every single idea, you would uh, try to put this into this bucket. So work, doesn't work, 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 yeah, and so on. So it really comes down to sometimes like very simple concepts like this. Keeping what's working, discarding what isn't working. But imagine how many people and companies actually don't do this. Uh, so either they don't know or they don't care or they have their own opinions of like, yeah, Facebook marketing is great. Meanwhile, the numbers would show something completely otherwise. So this is something, again, we need to be conscious of, like the first talk said, and be humble enough to admit. Simply, this is not working. And it comes down to this sort of startup philosophy where people are very married to their ideas. So they might say that uh, this is the greatest business plan ever. Meanwhile, they go to pitch it on Shark Tank or something, and everybody is just like hammering it down. It's terrible. But since they're so married to their ideas, they would pretty much rather die than give it away or give it up. So you want to look out for that and be willing to admit that you're wrong and be willing to do less of what doesn't work. So things work well for a period of time. So let's say the golden age for Google AdWords where wherever it was introduced something like 2000 or something to 2013. All right, it was working very well. It could have been uh, the number one uh, traffic search for my business for like, let's say I'm an accountant in New York. So it was working very well for those period of time, but suddenly in 2013, everybody figured out like, uh, this is so great. We want to do this as well. And it stopped working as well. Now, a humble business owner would we'll just look at this and uh, okay, we just did it until it worked well. Now it doesn't work anymore, we should stop it. And this is what marketing is about. Like you can test these things and get information from the marketplace. And if you're just willing to listen, the marketplace will always give you the answers of what to do. So a smart marketer would get out of Google AdWords, even if it would be a little bit profitable still, and look into other traffic sources. So maybe a display advertising on some popular um, blog would be a solution or something like this. Um, but they would be flexible with their plan, just like a great general would be. All right, so with all startups, there's stages and for my particular one 
And it's really all about the traction stage at this point. The idea is validated and you want to get traction. So it's really about focusing on a couple things. Uh, retention and engagement. Of course, uh, getting new clients is fine as well. Uh, nothing wrong about getting more clients. But if you're able to retain uh, the current clients and make them your raving fans at this stage, uh, then you stand a lot better of a chance of succeeding. So it's really about value. And this is something that I've hammered to my brain as much as possible. So always be asking yourself, what is value? So a simple question like that, what is value? And what is value for this particular customer? Because everybody wants things that are a little bit different. And if you want to provide that 10 out of 10 service or product, you need to know the answer to this question. Now, funnily enough, if you actually know the answer to this question, everything will be really quite easy. Like now all you need to do is deliver what they want and focus on that. So if you look at this and what is value and we answer like value is A. Now, if we actually deliver A, B, it's not uh, providing more value necessarily. So B might be completely waste. Like we say in Japan, Buddha. There's this Japanese concept of waste where all these auto manufacturers try to eliminate waste as much as possible. So you don't want to deliver A, B. Rather, you just want to deliver A as much as possible, as well as you can. Focus on that and then eliminate all that that is not wanted. So you're really just expanding on where you're providing the most value. That's really, again, very simple concept, but something people are not doing. So people either don't know what's value or they're doing it completely wrong. And we're going to look into what customers value in the next videos and how to find it out uh, what they actually want value because there's an entire process on this that is very scientific and tested but really um, this video is a this is a good way to end the video never stop moving growth is never done keep moving um, if you think of it uh, as a bit of a sprint so we are all sprinting towards uh, um, a gold, uh, golden bag or something <laughs> out there on the other side of the rainbow. Now, we probably will never find it, but like it's all about like getting closer to that ideal. And the ideal is always moving and everybody's going for it. So if you actually stop, um, the ideal is moving forward away because you'll have rest of an idea of what marketplace wants. But not only that, uh, your competitors are either catching up on you or uh, moving ahead of you. And this is why also annoyingly, as a business owner, as a CEO, whatever your position is, you cannot rest on your laurels. Um, there's a lot of smaller and maybe older people that wish things were the way they were for a long time ago. And it simply is not the case. Um, the world will be very different than it is uh, today than it is in five years, in 10 years, in 20 years. And if you're not growing, if you're not moving, it's just gonna pass you by and uh, it won't be pretty. So that's it for today's video. Uh, I'll provide part two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know how many it will be, but there will be a lot of information coming. I hope uh, you liked this video. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you did and uh, provide me a like on YouTube. I very much appreciate it. If you want to comment, uh, feel free. I'll answer to all of those when I feel like it. Anyway, thank you for watching. 
and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.